interesting because I'm in that little quiet space I was thinking about, you know, why I saw Vietnam as being so tragic and things and whatever. But again, uh, I wouldn't have the hurt feelings and the sorrow and things had I not made myself and others victims of this establishment or whatever and identify somebody as the bad guy. And so that's where the hurt comes from. And if you, um, you know, can change that point of view, then there's nothing to hurt. And if there's no one that identifies with being a wounded soldier, then there's no one to feel sorry about or to feel injured as a result of someone's actions. So I think that's a lot of what is there, you know, and I have to give up that uh, identity and attachment to that wounded soldier and just let him go on his way, you know, so to speak, and uh, move on, you know, because uh, that's what it's all about, I guess. And that's that little scene, I guess, you know, to all, all of us loosen away and see the clarity. Big insight yeah. to see that, to even start to see. Yeah. Where is he? Yeah. Yeah. It is the soldier who is wounded. Is that who I am? Yeah, and that's not who I am. That's a concept or one idea of how I even like to see myself at mm-hmm. times, yeah. you know. But again, uh, it's of no value now because all it caused me is suffering and pain, you know. It doesn't do me any good. <laughs> So I have to let him go on his way uh, and sort of dissolve and go the route. Apparently, the end of the song that this group in the 60s and 70s is called Bread. Mm -hmm. Bread. Mm -hmm. The song If. And they did a song If, and the very last line of the song is um, And one by one, the stars would all go out, and you and I would. We fly away. <laughs> the way the, the song ends, and I always thought that was real beautiful. Yeah. The stars will walk around. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, one thing that we can talk with really relates to what Ron's talking about is that Jesus describes the dream in two parts. He says, There's the dream that you dream in secret, and then there's the dreaming of the world. The dream that you dream in secret produces dreaming of the world. Another way to describe the dreaming of the world, Jesus says, is that it's it's the the dream in which you have given away the role of dreamer. (laughs) Say that again. The dream in which you've given away the role of dreamer. In other words, it's not at all seen as a dream. Mm -hmm. It's the, the one that's been given away. That's part of what it means to be given away. It's like, I had no part the mind is completely absolving itself from having any responsibility in any part of it. And when the mind believes in the secret dream and doesn't question that and believes in the dreaming of the world, gives away the second part, then it seems as if I was born such and such a year, such and such a parent, Mm -hmm. then it's in a state where it's constantly trying to figure, figure the screen out not looking at all, not knowing that the whole screen is produced by the secret dream, not even suspecting that there's this secret dream that's buried in the mind, it's, it's uncovered, it's, it's remained uncovered. Um, reminds me a little bit of that um, song, One Tin Soldier, when I've read some of those passages, you know, where the, the people, they come and they, they want to take over what the, the mountain people seem to have a secret, a very treasure, and these other people come, you know, and, and they ask, you know, to come, and, and the mountain people say, they send back the message, with our brothers, we will share. But the, the people want the, the treasure for themselves, so they go and they kill the mountain people only to find the treasure and uncover it, and it's the, the line in the song goes, peace on earth, was all it said. <laughs> you know? I mean, it, and it's described in the course as if, you know, when you're asleep in this dream and you don't know you're dreaming, it's as if 
there's a secret that your brother is hiding in his body and you believe you have to kill your brother's body to get it and of course it can take milder forms seemingly milder forms of just you know irritation or yelling and screaming but but this is believed to be the secret treasure that your brother's hiding in his body and it's it's just not there you know it's, the treasure is within the treasure is the holy spirit reminding us of our treasure in heaven but it's really interesting when you think about that the role the dream in which the role of the dreamer has been given away because that's where like you were saying that's where you would perceive yourself as the wounded soldier or the, the burdened husband or the burdened housewife or or the mistreated child that, that never had a life as good as other people and on and on and on. It seems as if the world just happens to you and, and when there's no sense of being the dreamer. It doesn't seem like there's any kind of causation or there, if the mind has any hand in it. Just like events just happen. Or in the movie, um, we just saw Forrest Gump, it can really seem like you're just a feather. And if the wind decides to blow east, yeah. off you go <coughs> for miles and miles. And then if the wind blows north, you go north. And if it's wind swirls and you swirl, it just seems like you're at the mercy of so many forces that... Or I used to get the image when I was in high school, I felt really like, at the time, kind of like a pinball a pinball machine. It just seemed like there were so many forces and it was like ding 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 ding. There was the, <laughs> the parents up there, you know, make a good life for yourself, do well, get good grades, and ding 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 ding. And you go over here with friends, you know, peer pressure and this and this, ding 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 down there, and then ding, <laughs> and you shoot up over there. What about the draft? What about the government? You know, ding ding ding. Oh, I don't want that. You know, it's like, felt like I was just bouncing around. And, and there's feelings of helplessness and power, listeners. <laughs> If you perceive yourself as as in this world and having not caused it in any way, so what we want to do is we want to see that that's just the screen that there's no hope of ever escaping from within the screen. But the only way of of escaping, so to speak, is by unveiling the secret dream. And Jesus, at one point, calls this death, that he says in the back of the the teacher's manual, that death is the central dream from which all illusions are born. So what we're going to do as we come at death today is again pull it off the screen. It seems in my whole life I've always associated death with death of bodies or things breaking down and decaying and, and then moving, being inanimate, you know, having been life, full of life and animation being inanimate and all that, and those are all those associations and meanings that that seem to be death, but it's defined all within the screen. And what Jesus is saying is that's not death. The death is, is the ego. Death is the central dream from which all this, these illusions stem. So death lies not in form but in content, once again. And it's, of course, it's an unreal content. It's it's a fragmenting thought, so really the only content or the only purpose that the mind can ever truly embrace would be the Holy Spirit. But it is pulling it back and and recognizing all the forms in which this this dream of death seems to take and but withdrawing the mind from investing in this. So I thought what we would do in exploring death would be to, to use the teacher's manual. There's a question that's posed to Jesus, what is death? And I think on page 63 in the uh, first edition, it's probably pretty close to that since I think the manual is 66. It was interesting too as I was reading through this today, I was I started coming across this word compromise. So I said, yeah. oh my God, put it in here again, then, then use it again. That, that also shows that there's Lesson 163, where it says, no compromise is possible. Yeah, well, that's where, I'm gonna, that's where we're going to go. After this 63, yeah, way in the back of the book. <coughs> to kind of relate this to specifics, too, because Becca was saying that she has a close friend who his wife, the minister, seems to be dying and everything, and, and it relates back to what Beverly was saying. 
we really have to come to a real clear understanding of death ourselves and unveil it in ourselves before we can be helpful in any of those situations where our brothers believe the death is of the world and of the body. Because if, if we're invested in it ourselves, then it's like there will just be grief. And we've probably all had the experience at one time or another of just being with somebody who's going through immense grief and just kind of breaking down with them. Mm -hmm. And it, it almost seems like it's, again, uncontrollable because it just seems so heavy and so deep. And what we want to do is we want to come to such a clarity of, of death that we can can let the Holy Spirit come through us and provide us strength and another way of looking at it without it being uh, a phony or kind arrogant. of superficial arrogant thing. You know, we want it to be real sincere and clear. So this is really helpful for that, I find. What is death? Death is the central dream from which all illusions stem. Is it not madness to think of life as being born, aging, losing vitality, and dying in the end? We have asked this question before, but now we need to consider it more carefully. It is the one fixed, unchangeable belief of the world that all things in it are born only to die. This is regarded as, quote, the way of nature, not to be raised to question, but to be accepted as the, quote, natural law of life. The cyclical, the changing and unsure, the undependable and the unsteady, waxing and waning in a certain way upon a certain path, all this is taken as the will of God. And no one asks, if a benign creator could will this. So as far as an opening paragraph, you can see the whole system is going to be questioned here. <laughs> he's not going to question aspects of it. He's saying the whole world you perceive waxing and waning away. You know, you, you know like uh, growing up, you know, uh, we were talking about truth, and, you know, and things that you could be sure of. And like, uh, you know, in my community, we knew two things: you would stay black and you would die. And that was the two things that you were sure of. If nothing else, whether the sun was going to rise tomorrow or whatever, but those two things you always knew, you know. And uh, that makes sense when it says, you know, that. Uh, uh, Death is a um, central dream from which all illusions stem, but it goes on to say, where does it part at? It is the one fixed, unchanged yeah. belief. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, again, we know that life's still a bitch and then you die, you know, we know that so clearly, you know, and uh, that's been sort of my experience, at least, that that's been drilled in. Another form is the only two things are certain are pay taxes. Yeah. And I've heard that version. <laughs> My math teacher in junior high was, was always saying that, you know, over mm -hmm. and over. Those are the certain things, yeah. And it sounds like it was even given the connotation that being black was like one cross to bear mm -hmm. right off the bat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that already put you behind or yeah. there's two sides too I mean yeah. the other side could be the pride mm -hmm. you know but it wasn't taken in that context that's, that well, was that's how I was yeah. 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 it was like a curse you yeah. know, death was a curse being black was a curse you know? yeah. so you knew those two things were inevitable in your life uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. so um, you know you got to sort of come up from that again attaching those identities Right. And uh, again, making it true. Yeah. yeah. My husband would say being Jewish was a curse, especially yeah. in Nazi mm -hmm. Germany. Yeah. yeah. And death uh, was a given. Yeah. You didn't die, it was a slow death in mm -hmm. your mind. You know. Yeah. Being a woman. Being a woman. Being a second place citizen. Mm hmm.